Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. This week we continue our journey across the South Island of New Zealand. In November 2016, we headed to New Zealand to embark on a six-month road trip around both the North and South Island. We shipped our 2012 Jeep Wrangler Arctic retrofitted for overlanding across the globe from Toronto to Auckland. We had no set plans, no agenda, and little knowledge of the country that we were about to spend half the year living in and would eventually cover over 10,000 kilometers of in our little ice blue Jeep that the five of us called home. We wanted adventure, and New Zealand gave it to us. Come along with us while we live out of our backpacks in our Jeep as we explore a new country full of unexpected adventures and breathtaking scenery around every corner. After we left Queenstown, we made the beautiful trek across the mountains to a place called Tianao, which is known as the Gateway to Fiordland National Park. We were also going that way because we wanted to do a tour of a place called Milford Sound. So when we got situated and set up our camp, we booked a tour for the next morning. We woke up early the next morning and boarded a bus that took us across an incredible mountain drive through tunnels and down some really steep valleys and eventually ended up in Milford Sound, where we boarded the ship to take the cruise. Milford Sound is known as the jewel of Fiordland National Park. It's surrounded by towering cliffs, glaciated peaks, and dense rainforest. We would travel 16 kilometers by boat from the head of the fjord to the open sea. We stood at the bow of the ship and watched amazed while we passed concaving valleys nestled between green cliffs, where waterfalls cascade into the fjord basin. And in some spots, the fjord can be 400 meters deep. After Milford Sound, we drove back through the Fiordland National Park to a place called McKay Creek, 
which has a DOC or Department of Conservation camping spot. somewhere in the bush here. We've hiked quite a ways in the bush across, across the river and are taking a look in the forest. Um, Pete was flying it and he said he saw it hit a tree and we're at that tree and we don't see it. So we're gonna have to look. It might be caught in the trees, it might have landed in the water and flowed down stream or something, but hopefully we can find it. Before leaving Fjord Lane National
After that incredible camping experience, we headed to the southernmost part of New Zealand, a town called Bluff. And then we spent the night in Invercargill, which is just north of there. especially on such a windy, cold night. After that, we drove north to the beautiful town of Dunedin, and along the way we stopped at the Moraki Boulders. boulders are found along New Zealand's Otago coast. We had a fun time playing on these fascinating spherical stones. Next we drove to Twizel where we set up camp for the night and prepared for a couple of days off the grid in Oraki Mount Cook National Park. excited to visit Mount Cook National Park since before we even got to New Zealand. So when we first got into camp it was actually quite cloudy but later on in the afternoon the clouds cleared and there was a massive mountain looming right in front of our camp. On one of the days, we decided to hike to Mueller Hut. So we woke up early with our gear covered in thick frost, got on our packs, and headed out on the trek, unknowing of just how incredibly memorable this hike would be.
took a slight turn for the worse at the end of our time in the National Park, we decided to do one last hike along part of the Hooker Valley track. Next we drove from Mount Cook to Christchurch and then on to Arthur's Pass. On the way to Arthur's Pass we stopped Castle Hill in the Canterbury High Country. Arthur's Pass. This was an incredibly steep and windy road and I think it was a 16% grade that went for 10 kilometers. It certainly tested the brakes on our Jeep. In Arthur's Pass, we found a really nice camp spot where we set up our camp for the night. And at night, when it got dark, we took a hike into the forest and found some glowworms. The next day, we continued west and we stopped in Punakake, which is famous for these big ocean blowholes, as well as what they call the pancake rocks. It's something you should definitely see. up to a town called Westport where we set up camp again.
again and spend a couple of nights. We then drove north to the town of Nelson and we spent a couple of days there. One of the days the wind picked up off the ocean and it was quite the experience. Sad to go, but we boarded the ferry and headed across Cook Strait back to Wellington in the North Island, where we spent the night. Make sure you join us next week where we travel up the west coast of the North Island right to the very northernmost top of New Zealand, a place called Cape Rianga, and a lot of fun adventures along the way. So make sure if you haven't subscribed that you hit that subscribe button. We're really excited to have 6,000 subscribers. Thank you to each one of you. We really enjoy having you along for the trip. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road.